Deontay Wilder's trainer, friend, slash, I don't know, Team Wilder, T-boy, or whatever, yes, man, depending on where you sit, you're going to see him as one of them three. But Malik Scott has come out and give some more quotes to the media about Deontay Wilder's next fight. Now, it's not the first time he's put quotes out about Deontay Wilder and potential opponents, but with, like, there only being a few weeks left for them allegedly about to like announce a fight or whatever. And the fact that Malik Scott basically said that Andy Ruiz is a front runner and that's pretty much the route they're looking to go down. Obviously, he doesn't make the final decision when it comes to Team Wild and what they do. We all know that. But he is allegedly a good friend of Deontay Wilder so if he's getting this information I have to assume it's coming from Wilder and Wilder probably has some sort of say on who he's fighting next now I was always of the impression that if they're going to go the Andy Ruiz route then I don't think they're too serious about a potential Anthony Joshua fight in December so in my mind they may not be thinking about Deontay Wilder Anthony Joshua in December because essentially why would you go for a alleged hard fight against Andy Ruiz Jr. and then going against Anthony Joshua. I mean, you're going to get paid a truckload of money or whatever at the end of the year, aren't you? So why would you risk it in going with an Andy Ruiz in, in September or whatever? Why would you want to risk it? I'll tell you the answer why you're going to risk it, right? Is because Andy Ruiz Jr. is not a hard fight for Deontay Wilder. That's why you would risk it. Now, when it comes to Andy Ruiz, right, there's two sides of supporters that both support him for different reasons, right? And they both think that he's good for different reasons. And I'll tell you why. So you've got the Anthony Joshua lot, right? Who basically, because Andy Ruiz Jr. beat Anthony Joshua, they have to put high credit on An Andy Ruiz's name and make him out to be some killer, some, you know what I mean, top dog or whatever. Because essentially, all he's really done in his whole entire career is had like, nine rounds of success against Anthony Joshua. Everything else he's done in his whole career has been average. Joseph Parker fight, average. The fact that you went a close decision with jo Joseph Parker like that proves you're not a world-class heavyweight, in my opinion. But because he done over AJ, and AJ fans hold AJ in high regard, they have to hold Andy Ruiz in high regard as well because he beat their king kind of thing, and he, he's a great boxer, but he's really not. If you look at the footage, Andy Ruiz Jr. isn't that good of a boxer. I don't care what people say about his fast hands. When have his fast hands ever done anything to anyone other than Anthony Joshua? Let's be honest. If Luis Ortiz didn't have old knees, he would have won that fight. Andy Ruiz Jr. isn't that good in my opinion. But anyway, over to the second set of fans who big up Andy Ruiz Jr. for everything other than his boxing ability. And that's in my opinion, it's the PBC boys. Like, I don't know what you call them. Like, over here, you've got the Matchroom fanboys. Uh, we all know them. They, who, they, they basically make themselves very well known or whatever. There's like a small contingent over in the States or whatever who are basically the, the same but for PBC, so that PBC can do nothing wrong. So if they've signed Andy Ruiz Jr., Andy Ruiz Jr. is a great heavyweight, and it's purely because he fights under that banner. You guys, I think it's ridiculous. Go see the videos, go read the comments. You guys should probably already know what I'm talking about. I don't need to be saying this. But essentially, there's two sets of groups there, two sets of fans that big up Andy Ruiz Jr. And in my opinion, none of them think that he's that good as a boxer, but as I say, there's politics behind it, so they have to back their guy for a specific reason, and I just name the reasons there, or why I think them reasons are. As for the fight itself, I got Deontay Wilder having literally zero issues with beating Andy Ruiz Jr. I think that I think that realistically if they are looking to make that fight they need to get a move on if they are thinking about anything in December but this is why I don't think December is a, a viable option to be fighting if they're going to go Andy Ruiz not because Andy Ruiz is a tough fight no no nothing to do with that Andy Ruiz is a big fight I say big fight I mean Mexican American versus African American both ex-champions both fairly well known obviously the community is there they got a lot of boxing banter going forward and backwards so it, it, it will make for a nice fight it'll make for decent numbers, decent pay-per-views or whatever, but they need to give it the right build-up. And I think with the time being where it is, we're almost, what, end of June now, entering July almost, they would need to give it, in my opinion, eight to 12 weeks of a build-up to maximize revenue, obviously, of pay-per-views and ticket sales and whatever. They need to give it as much time as possible. And if they give it that time from today, it, December date goes out the window because Deontay Wilder's not gonna have the time to turn it around. I don't think that Deontay Wilder has any issues. I think he'll stop Andy Ruiz at some point. I think that he'll answer a lot of questions and he'll put a lot of questions to sleep and likely retire Andy Ruiz Jr. But if he does go that route, as I say, I don't think it leaves him the time to go for a potential December fight. I don't believe December fight is going to happen. I think it's just uh, been great marketing for a certain company who are new into the sport. If they pull it off, great. I'd like to see, obviously. But if you're going to come into the business and not really spend any money but get your name everywhere, Maybe telling everyone that you're going to spend a lot of money is the way to do it. Who knows? They haven't delivered it yet. Who knows? They may well do. But in the meantime, it's looking like, well, if Malik Scott is to be believed anyway, that Deontay Wilder is re-exploring the Andy Ruiz option. It's a big fight in the States. It's probably the big, biggest fight he can make that's non 
Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua. So it makes sense for them to make it. At the end of the day, boxing is a business. Nothing's on the table as far as we're aware from Saudis otherwise anyway. So they're free to proceed. Hopefully they are proceeding. I'd like to see this fight. If they don't make the Andrews fight, I've got a feeling it's going to be someone like Charles Martin. I wouldn't even mind seeing that either. I just want to see some boxing, to be honest. That's all i got for this one, guys. Share your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Like, comment, share, subscribe, or don't. I'll catch you on the next one. Love.